Hey everybody, this is Eric and I just want to say this video you're about to watch is from my course Create Awesome Vue.js Apps with Nux.js. This is one of the videos I do where I talk to you all about watchers. So we're going to look about how you create a watcher, some tips and tricks about watchers that you should know in Vue.js, and we're going to go through all the way through it. If you guys are interested in this, uh, I would highly recommend in the description below I have a link to uh, where you can get uh, sign up for my email list and I will let you know when this course is out. Um, and actually it's in um, it's not out right now, but you can just put your email address in. I'll send you a free Vue.js cheat sheet and uh, once the course is out, you'll be uh, you'll let I'll let you know when it's out. So that's awesome. So go ahead and enjoy this video where I explain to you about watchers. Thanks. Now let's take a look at watchers. Now watchers are very similar to computed properties. In fact, in most times you probably want to use computed properties, so keep that in mind. But there's some times when you want to watch a particular particular item or property inside your Vue.js application and you want to do something when that item changes. When um, that item changes, you may want to update something on the screen. Uh, it can be asynchronously or it can be something else. So let's take a look at this example of how you use a watcher. So I have an empty example here, and one of the classic ways we can demonstrate this is by creating a counter. So we're gonna create a counter on the screen, something really simple. We're gonna create a counter here. We're gonna start it at zero. And then right after our data object, we're gonna create this watch object. And just to make sure we can actually change it, uh, let's go ahead and create a button, and we're gonna call it press me. And then we're going to add a V. Actually, we're going to add a click event to it. Remember, the at sign is the same as the beyond. And we're going to assign it to, uh, well, we'll assign it to an expression, which we'll just do counter plus plus. So every time you press the button, the counter will increment. So if we just do that and we save it, we see the press me on the screen here. If I can make it a little bigger, you see I press it, it changes as we expect it to. So we also want maybe inside the console to log a message every time that changes. So I can go down here to watch. I create this watch object, you can see right here. And inside the watch ob object, well, I go ahead and put the name of the element I want to watch. So it would just instead of like the computer property where all the items inside the computer property, if any of them change, the whole computer property gets recalculated. This actually only watches one item, and the item is the same name you name it. Name it. So, for example, we named this counter. So we would watch, take, create the watcher, and we would name it counter. So let's do that. So counter, and you can act as a method, or it's not a method, but it's a watcher. But it looks very similar to like a method or a function. And then you have it has two values. So the first can be uh, the first is the new value, and this is optional. And the second value is the old value. So you don't just necessarily know when it changes, but you also get the value it was before and the value it is now. So we can do this. We can do console.log, and we'll just do uh, old value, and then we'll call it see here new val actually excuse me it starts with the new version uh, well we'll start with the old version first old val value oops we'll call this old val and then comma new value and we'll call and we'll use new val here I'm just using some ES6 string interpolation stuff that's what these back ticks are for, if you're not familiar with that. So I'm going to look inside my inspect here, look inside the console. I'll refresh it, and you can see here, every time I do it, so yeah, you see here, so old value 6, new value 7, old value 7, new value 8. So every time this changes, this watcher gets updated. So that's one way to do it. Uh, let's let's. There's actually this was mentioned in Chris Fritz's talk. There's a couple way we can do watchers. I'll show you one of the ways. You're not going to use this too often, but I think it's worth mentioning. So I'm going to create an input. 
Uh, and we're going to do uh, on the input, we're going to use the vmodel directive and we're going to call it some text. I know, very original. And it's giving us an error because we need to make sure it's defined here in our data model. And you can see here we just have a big empty text. So maybe we want to do something silly, but let's say every time a value changes, remember we're going to add it to this watchers object and we have to name it the same thing as what we're searching or what we want to look for. So we can do some text here. And in the sum text, we want to call a function. So uh, we might make sure we add a comma here. So we're going to call this dot update counter. And the idea being is every time you type a, a message or a key, it updates the counter. So we can come down here and we'll create a methods object and we'll create this update counter. And it's not going to do much. All it's going to do is going to do this dot. Remember, every time we want to access something in the data object, we have to use this, anything inside this view instance. This dot counter plus plus. So now if I type but something, it says update counter is not a function. So because I forgot capital C there. And so you can see here, it's updating this value every time I type a letter, a key. So we can actually refactor this. So some text doesn't have to be like this. We can um, get rid of the method here. And I put a colon at the end, and then it, it can just accept in a text string the name of the method that we want to invoke. So we can just put update counter like this. So I'll delete this, I'll save it. I'll refresh it and you can see it still works the same. So now we've swapped it out from putting this, this kind of looking method call to just using a string amount here. Now there's one other thing that's that's very common is that you'll see in a lot of applications and this one is not going to be one of them but you'll see a created hook right here. Remember we, we saw the lifecycle hooks in the, one of the previous videos? And typically, in a lot of Vue.js applications, in this lifecycle hook, you might call some kind of asynchronous function. So you might call something to connect to a backend to get a list of users or get um, a list some data or information. And you hook it into this created hook, so that way every time the component loads, it goes and does this. So let's say, for some reason, we wanted to call counter. And we could do that. So if we refresh it, and once again, I actually added a D. So you can see here it switched it to one because as soon as the application loaded, it ran this dot updated update counter, which updated the counter. So it starts at one instead of zero. But you may have noticed that we have this some text here. So we can actually kind of get rid of this created hook because if all we're doing is when the both when the values change in the text input, but also when the created hook runs, it runs the same method, maybe we can combine this. So this is part of the seven secrets talk Chris was talking about is you don't really need this created hook at all. So you can do the same thing. Instead of having this sum text here, you would have it as an object. And then you can have a handler here. So we'll have a handler. And this handler is, once again, the name of the method that you are wanting to call. And the second part of the handler of this watch is uh, something called immediate true. And so what that means is soon as the component loads, it automatically assumes that this watcher was uh, initiated so it will go ahead and update this so if we refresh it see now we're at one as we expected so it's it's still doing it here we can also do here console log updated so you can see it's still it's working so you see updated old value zero new value one 
uh, yep, updated old value zero. So we refresh it, you see updated zero, old value um, one, new value one. So you can see that's a couple of ways you can kind of refactor some of your components to be a little bit nicer by using this watcher. If we know that we have a watch on a variable and we have a create hook and they're calling the same method, then we can combine it into one. So this might be a common pattern you see that uh, you want to do something every time something occurs. Um, so that's, that's just a quick way of doing watchers.